Science has uncovered the origins of a lot of things over the centuries, but one question that's still on everyone's mind. How did homosexuality evolve? Hey guys, Tara here for D News, and over the past two years of doing this show, we have covered a lot of scientific breakthroughs. Finding water on Mars, birth control for men, the relative usefulness of bras, but now science may have solved one of its greatest mysteries yet. How did homosexuality evolve? Well, according to new research published in the journal Archives of Sexual Behavior, it may have evolved in order to promote social bonding amongst humans. This is the first study of its kind to find discrete evidence that our need to bond with others actually increases our openness to engaging in homosexual behavior. For their study, a team of researchers from the University of Portsmouth looked at the relationship between sexual attitudes and the hormone progesterone. What they discovered is that the more progesterone there is in a heterosexual woman's saliva, the more open she is to the idea of engaging in homosexual behavior. Likewise, heterosexual men, who are subtly reminded about the importance of having male comrades, reported feeling more open towards engaging in homosexual behavior, and that was particularly true for men with higher levels of progesterone. But what is it about this hormone that relates to all of this? Well, a bit of background. Progesterone is a steroid hormone typically found in women's ovaries and men's adrenal glands. In the same way that oxytocin is considered to be the love hormone, progesterone is basically the friend version of that. It's one of the main hormones responsible for caring and friendly behavior, which is why your levels of progesterone tend to rise when you're having a close interaction with a friend. Obviously, from an evolutionary standpoint, it's beneficial for humans to form social bonds. So from that perspective, more progesterone in your body is a good thing. But then comes the topic of reproduction, which for humans is basically the logical endpoint of sexual behavior. Or at least, we think it is. According to lead author Diana Fleischman, sexual behavior hasn't always been just about reproducing. It's also about forming and maintaining social bonds. And there's certainly evidence in other species demonstrating that recreational sex isn't limited to just humans. Great apes, for example, have historically engaged in homosexual behavior as a way of forging new friendships. 